one of these and a second one of these. Or maybe you want to add one of these. Well, this is our continuation of the presentation that Steve did on alternating charging your camper batteries and that was presented at the Truck Camper Adventure Rally in 2022. To recap what went on in episode one, I wanted to stress that the voltage provided by either smart alternators or fixed barely adequate to provide any charging at all. And if you really want to accomplish quite a bit of charging, you need to have one of three solutions. Solution number one would be to increase your alternator size slightly and use a DC to DC charger. Option two, if you want even more, is to upgrade your vehicle to use dual alternators charging in the same common 12 volt system and then use several DC to DC chargers in order to achieve the, volt, the charge that you need. Option three, which is the one I use and the one I prefer, is to actually install, use that second alternator as a dedicated camper charging unit and put a charging regulator on it uh, you don't have to deal with the DC to DC converters, and we'll go into the details of that. So here we are. We're going to send Steve back to the hotel and dive into all those details for you. Talk about the first basic solution that you might be able to achieve. Because we talked about the fact that you had somewhere between 25 and 55 amps of capacity in, in a 175 amp alternator, it doesn't help to achieve 40 to 50 amps of charging we have because we don't have that capacity all the time. As a matter of fact, we have that capacity only a small amount of time. So one of the first things that you're going to want to do is this alternator should be growing a little bit. And so I have, in this case, I've suggested that you might need about a 225 amp capacity battery, which has, again, about 50% of that is continuous duty rated. So this system would have about a 110 amp continuous capacity. Using the expectation of a 30 to 60 amp engine load, that means I have somewhere around 80 to 50 to 80 amps of overhead capacity available to me for a charger. Again, I'm looking for 40 to 50 amps. That means I can get 40 to 50 amps out of this pretty much regardless of what the vehicle is doing. So that step one is to get yourself a slightly, slightly larger alternator. When you get a larger alternator, you're going to ne need to look at the wiring that you've in, have installed in the vehicle and you may need to increase the capacity of that wiring because that wiring is designed for the truck to operate not for the truck and an auxiliary battery or batteries to be charged at a high rate from the same system so you need to look at the whole system and then we're going to do something we're going to add in this DC to DC charger one of the beauties of a DC to DC battery charger is, is that the battery can receive any voltage that the alternator is producing and that means this 12.4 to 13.4 volt low voltage that normally wouldn't be incapable of charging a battery, the DC to DC charger will boost that voltage and pro provide the proper charging voltage that the battery needs. And it will do so by pulling the power from the uh, engine alternator. In order to charge this deep cycle battery at this 40 amps that we want, the, the charger is probably going to be pulling about 50 amps from the engine. In order to to boost this voltage and provide it at 40 amps, it's going to have to take more amperage at a lower voltage from the engine. There's a calculation involved in trying to figure this out, but I'm not going to go into it now. If you would like some more information on that, you can probably have to make a comment and we'll, we can talk about that. But this system is fairly simple. This DC to DC charger has, has four cables, two to the deep cycle battery, two to the starting battery, and a single wire lead that runs back here to the ignition system to tell the DC to DC charger to turn on. You can see one of the things that I think that you should install here, if you were to run a DC to DC charger in your vehicle, you should install a switch near the driver's side so that you can shut off your alternator. Just like you should shut off your air conditioner if your engine is getting hot or if you're climbing a hill, you should do the same thing for your DC to DC charger. It's pulling about the same amount of energy from your engine that that, that air conditioner is. So you don't want it running when your tr engine is trying to do everything that it can do to pull your heavy trailer up a hill. So put this disable switch in there and think of it whenever you turn off your air conditioner and turn off your DC to DC charger too. Uh, the pros of this system is it is still pretty simple. This DC to DC charger is in itself a split charge device which separates the two batteries. It will, disconnect, it will not allow these two batteries to operate with each other when the engine is off. This will pretty much guarantee you 40 amps of charging anytime the vehicle is in operation. Um, the vehicle is completely unaffected by this thing, other than the fact that we have replaced the, the standard duty alternator with a heavier duty alternator. Because your battery, your camper battery gets a, a, it gets a complete charge from the microprocessor controlled charging system, it should remain healthy for much, much longer. 
Um, this system, I specified this to be a 40 amp charger, but as you can see, I said there's 50 amps available. So if you look at the difference between 110 amps continuous and a maximum vehicle capacity of 60 amps, there is 50 amps available. But that 50 amps is actually the input to the system. So in, again, I said in order to get 40 amps out at 14 volts, you're going to have to put in you know, 45 or 48 amps in at 12 and a half volts or something like that. This is relatively uh, well matched to this particular system. And this, the beauty of DC to DC chargers is they can compensate for the voltages needed by either lead acid systems or by lithium iron phosphate systems. The cons of this, this is a little bit more expensive. You're going to have to spend some money on a larger alternator. You're going to have to spend some money on this DC charger. You're also going to have to spend some money on some fairly significantly sized electrical cable that's going to run from this wherever this DC charger is located to your to your camper batteries and from the from the starting battery into it. So you're talking about 15 or 20 feet of you know two gauge or four gauge cable. It's you know 50 to 75 dollars. It's not insubstantial. One of the problems with this is is that we're we're in before we had a a jump start or a boost button near the steering column. We don't have that anymore. This DC to DC charger does not allow these two batteries to connect in order to allow you to jump start your, your starting battery with your camper batteries. That's one of the downsides here. The other downside here is, is there is no alternators are built with a uh, temperature safety. If you were to put this 40 amp DC to DC charger in here with your original smaller alternator, you probably would overheat it and you would probably overheat it regularly and it would probably fail early because it has no means of protecting itself from being overheated. Um, I have developed a, a little thermal switch that can be had that is wired in line with this DC to DC charger and I'll show you that in a minute. That can disable the charger if the alternator gets too hot and it's a relatively inexpensive thing to do. So that's one solution and if that's enough for you then that, that's probably what I would recommend that you do. But if it's not enough for you, there's two other solutions that I want to show you that could help you to reach higher levels of performance. Now that we've discussed a method for getting better performance out of a smart alternator, if 40 amps is not enough charge for you, if you've got a large battery bank, if you don't want to drive for long durations and you need higher charge rates, there are solutions. And so this is a proposal for another one. So this is my second solution and it consists of this. We, we retain the original 170 amp alternator and we add a second 170 amp alternator. There are many factory truck configurations which dual alternators are options are available. And what this does is it allows us two 85 amp continuous ratings. So we now have two alternators and produce a, a continuous rating of 170 amps total. With that 170 amp total output even if we're consuming 60 amps by having our truck engine running and having all of our lights and our, and our stereo and our heating systems on, we still have 110 amps available to charge the battery. But again, because of the low voltage output of these alternators, we're going to have to take measures in order to get that 110 amps available and push it out into the batteries. And this is the same situation as before, except one, one DC charger, you can, you can have two of them, or one much larger one. Again, with two 40 amp chargers, you're pushing 40 amps into the battery, you're still going to be pulling somewhere between 85 to 90 amps, or possibly even up to 100, depending on what the system voltage is, into those batteries. So this 40 amps output is, is not the input. So this is, uh, this is going to be a substantial load on this engine. Uh, the advantage of using two smaller chargers is that you can shut one of them off and only charge one of them if, if you have a small need or, or a long drive. Uh, much better to do that. Or you can, again, some of these larger DC to DC chargers have the capacity to drop to half capacity with a flip of a switch. And so that's something you should look at. With this much charging, you're going to have some very large wires uh, running between your batteries. It's going to be fairly complex and expensive. One of the things that I've developed is a thermal switch, which is a very inexpensive device. It can be bolted to the alternator case. And what it does for a DC to DC charger is that the, this ignition wire that turns the DC charger on goes through this switch and it goes up to the ignition switch where you have your manual disable. So you have two different systems can, can turn off this charger. You, the driver, can turn it off if you're going up a, a steep incline or if the engine's overheating. Um, but if the 
alternator is overheating, this thermal switch is going to reach 120 centigrade and it's going to shut off. And it's going to tell, when it, when it shuts off, it removes the ignition sin signal from the DC charger and the DC charger shuts off. And this thermal switch will reset once it cools back down. Once the alternator cools off, the switch will cool off and it will close again and the DC charging will again commence. If you have a lighted switch here, you can wire it in such a way that uh, that can show you when it's on. The benefits of this system is, is you can get 80 amps of battery charging. You're going to pull 90 plus amps from your vehicle. You're going to push 80 amps into the batteries. Um, this does require some vehicle modifications. You do have to put that second alternator on if you don't already have it. The benefits of this with a microprocessor controlled battery charger, it maintains the battery health of your deep cycle batteries. I ac accidentally wrote here that there's 120 amps available, there's only 110 amps available, but if we're going to use about 85 to 90 amps of it, that's probably as, as close to the limit as I'd like to come. And I would recommend that you come. And this is again both lead acid and lithium iron phosphate compatible because the microprocessor inside the DC charger will handle the different battery chemistry voltage levels required. Things that are unattractive about this system, this is relatively expensive. Getting a second alternator kit from a factory from the, from the dealer to put on this is a relatively expensive thing to do. If you could get one from a junkyard, which is what I did, it's relatively inexpensive. So you're going to have to buy a second alternator and a mounting kit for it. You're going to have to buy two DC to DC chargers or one large one, depending on what, how you choose to do it. This still provides you with no jump start. And, and also, one of the issues with this is as you're pulling more and more power from your alternator systems and you still have no thermal protection of your alternator systems, this is a bit of a risk that, uh, that can be mitigated. It's something that you need to understand when you're anytime you're adding a lot of additional power draw from your engine systems, it would be good to to have some insurance to protect them. And so this is your s solution for s yet more power. And there, there's one more uh, solution I'd like to show you that I think is a very attractive uh, system also. My third and final recommendation for improving your alternator generation to support your auxiliary batteries is to, again, we're going back to the, to the chart here. Uh, and what I'm going to show you here is, here is an engine again with two alternators, but these are we're still probably using factory mounts, but what we're going to do is we're going to maintain the original vehicle alternator to operate the vehicle systems. We're not going to attach anything to it. What we're going to do is we're going to add a second alternator of about a 250 amps capacity, and we're going to dedicate this, this alternator to battery charging directly. We're not going to use a, a DC to DC charger to manage the charging because these two alternators, this, this, this main original engine alternator is going to vary its voltage as the engine control computer tells it to, but this second alternator is going to be set up to specifically be a battery charger. It is not providing a, a fixed voltage. It is as a special purpose charging regulator which controls the voltage output from the alternator to properly charge any batteries it's connected to. This has a very high amperage capacity so in our previous example, we had two 40 amp chargers. We now have a 250 amp alternator, which is capable of producing 125 amps continuous out of this alternator. Um, and I can tell you from experience, when this engine alternator first st starts up, it, it may produce 200 amps. And as it warms up, this, the temperature sensor, which is attached to it, will speak to the regulator and the regulator will slow the rate of charge to keep the alternator from overheating. This has got the best of both worlds in that it doesn't just shut off the, the DC to DC chargers to protect the alternator. It actually reduces the charging to the, to the level that the alternator can handle at that time. You know, if you're driving to Prudhoe Bay in Alaska in the middle of winter, uh, alternator cooling is probably never going to be a problem. But I don't think many people are doing that. I think you'd much more often be driving through the Arizona desert or on your way to the Florida Keys in which heating is very much a problem. So this charging regulator has the intelligence to sense the, the voltage and the output of the alternator as well as the temperature and to make sure that the, it's always providing the maximum amount of charge that it can handle at a temperature that can be sustained. And so these, uh, this is not a special purpose uh, alternator, but it is a special purpose charging regulator. And there are several companies that make them, Wakespeed, Mastervolt, and Balmar being the key ones. Um, I have installed uh, these, this system for, for others. 
and using a Balmore regulator and uh, uh, just an example of what I, what I did, we, we installed a 200 amp alternator for a gentleman. He had five Battleborn 100 amp hour batteries at about 30% state of charge. And when we first started this up, the 200 amp alternator was charging at 190 amps. And it did so for, you know, five or ten minutes until it got hot, and then it started to back off. And it backed off down to about 140 amps charging system was still a very robust system and a very safe system producing a lot of energy and charging the batteries very rapidly. This charging regulator here is a very expensive device. It probably costs as much as a DC to DC charger but it literally does the same thing that a DC to DC charger does it but it maximizes whatever alternator you want to hook it to. So if you have uh, if you wanted to get a larger capacity alternator there you could certainly get more battery charging out of it. You also have some programming in this charging regulator that, that can tell it to reduce its charge rate. 125 amp possible output down to 100 amps, you can do it. This is a very simple system as you can see. It only consists of wiring and, and this, a connector that can gonna, gonna have to be some interconnect between your vehicle and your RV. Um, and there's also going to have to be a wire to the battery to allow the charging regulator to sense what the charging, what the voltage at the batteries is. But it's a f very simple system, very clean. Um, and very reliable. In my opinion, the most reliable. So again, my pros are you get 120 amps of charging, uh, you do have the vehicle mods to, to add the, the batteries or add the alternators on there. You have, again, you have a microprocessor controlled battery charging device that's going to maintain the battery health of your very expensive set of batteries. It'll work with lead acid or lithium iron phosphate batteries. And again, it keeps the two separated. And, and one of the key parts about this is, is it does include alternator temperature regulation, which will keep the alternator from overheating. It'll keep the secondary alternator from overheating. It doesn't do anything to the truck alternator, but since we're not loading it, we shouldn't see any problems. The mounting kit's the same as any other mounting kit. This charge regulator is fairly expensive. They're on the order of three to four hundred dollars. So they're as expensive as a, a good sized DC to DC charger. So it, 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 there's no real savings here other than the fact that it produces 125 amps for the same cost as you can probably do for a 80 amp solution. These are the different opportunities that I present that uh, could provide a good alternator charging for you, that could overcome the shortcomings of the smart alternator systems, and really makes the, the potential for improving the robustness of your charging system, uh, regardless of your battery type and regardless of your alternator setup. This, again, this document is available on working on exploring slash tech docs. It's there with a number of other things. So thank you for coming by. I hope this was helpful to you. And if so, or you have questions or comments, please drop us a note down in the comments below. Don't forget to like and subscribe if you really like these Shop Talk videos. We have a few more coming before we set off on travels, and then we'll be switching to travel mode. I think just as a recap, I wanted to make sure that, you know, don't go for the biggest solution. Find out what your needs are and find the appropriate solution for your needs. There's a lot of people out there who want to go big, and they just get in trouble with it. Yeah. So just, just size it to what you actually need. That's it. That's it. That's all I got to say we'll about see that. See you next time at the next shop talk.